Hello everyone, it's me, Pretender Prowl. I'm back after a while to bring you a quick look at the Mega Constructs Masters of the Universe Eternia Battleground playset. This is an exclusive from Mattel Creations. At the filming of this video, you can go to Mattel Creations, order this set. I believe if you pay about $75, that will get you the set itself plus standard shipping. That is not a bad price compared to what you get with this set. You get, a, uh, you get a structure, four figures, and a couple other features that I'll get into in just a moment. Just a quick note, when this item arrived, it came in its own uh, shipper box. It has a Eternia Battleground printed on the box. I ordered this thing by itself with nothing else from its creations. I like how it comes with its own little box. That way, if I want to store the box for uh, future use, I will have a uh, box to... Uh, Put it in to keep it from getting scratched up. There seems to be 14 bags in total. But as usual, I like to uh, focus on just the figures first. And we have uh, two manuals. Um, I'm trying to remember if any other set had two manuals. That's, that's interesting. We're going to compare the Webster that comes with the Eternia set with the one that comes with the Snake Mountain set. This one here on the left is the one that came with Snake Mountain. This one here on the right is the one that came with Eternia. As you can tell, the one on the right is a darker blue that comes with the larger blaster. One on the left is the lighter blue that comes with the little handgun. In my opinion, the one on the left here, I believe, is a filmation accurate version. And the one here on the right is the... Mattel toy version. A clear pole was provided for the side of Eternia Tower to hold uh, the new figure of the set Buzz Off. Buzz Off comes with a buildable axe that simulates the original toy. He also has the removable helmet that the original toy had with the uh, blue eyes underneath. Now unlike the original toy where the helmet falls off all the time unless you really secure it on there, it actually has a hole and peg system that attaches nice and neat onto the top of the head. The wings are made of a uh, almost a see-through plastic with the wing design painted on it. And it has a hole in the back that you can put a hook or you can put him on the pole. I would take Buzz off down and hang him around and uh, pose him and stuff. But I like the fact that he's just, just uh, hanging around there chilling. So I'll just uh, leave it at that. Taking a look at the ninja figure that comes with this set. Overall, pretty good figure. He's got a, uh, a nice uh, painted graphic on him. The dragon with the sword. He also has the uh, the sash on him. It's the rubbery sash that Mega Box uses for uh, some of their ninja type figures. Also, the sash, I believe, was also used for the Star Trek figures. For the uh, original series line. The sash does have a couple of slots in it to hold the weapons. I think that's uh, kind of neat. Take a quick look at the weapons here. It actually comes with a uh, an actual functional bow and arrow. Of course I'm not going to shoot this arrow because I don't want to lose it. The nunchucks I don't care for. They're, uh, the chain is like a rubbery chain. That hooks on to the two handles. Uh, while you're manipulating it, it will come apart like all the time. I believe after I film this video, I'm just going to take all of Ninja's weapons and just uh, seal them in a bag. So I can never lose them. Yeah, quick comparison, I know it's not fair. But here is my custom Ninja that I made a year or so ago when I started this line. In my opinion... I like my Ninja better. He's just a little bit more beefed up. That's because I've used uh, Halo pieces and such. I know this is not a fair comparison, guys, but 
I just wanted to show off my Ninja again. The real reason I bought this set. An actual Mega Constructs build of Attack Track. This is the best piece in the whole set, in my opinion. I love the vehicles. I love how this vehicle, the construction of this vehicle is very similar to the Battle Ram, where a whole bunch of small pieces come together to make all the arches and curves and everything to make that mechanized look. I like how this simulates the original toy, where the tracks are uh, flipping and flopping for uh, terrain. Now, the original build of Attack Track had actual laser cannons on the side here. These don't really look like laser cannons to me. I'm not sure what these are supposed to be. I don't have an original attack track for comparison. But I think these should have been like better guns. The harness flies up. So you can remove the figure. And now to get to that figure. I suppose every set has to have at least a Skeletor or a, a He-Man. This is a battle armor He-Man that actually has the scratch across it. Now this is to go with the Skeletor that came with the land shark that had the scratch on it. I don't have another battle armor He-Man from the Point Dread set for comparison at the moment, but I will make one very critical observation for this figure. He doesn't have the silver underneath, the metal piece in the center that fills up the armor. This uh, piece I have used a couple times to fill up uh, the Fisto. This Fisto had this exact same problem. So uh, I think uh, Fisto and He-Man are starting a new club. We'll call it the Naked Armor Series. Other than that, it's a pretty good He-Man figure, but you know, it is a He-Man figure, one of many. One of the smaller builds that was included in this set is a computer terminal slash weapons rack. The weapons rack has uh, the usual weapons that you would find on Grayskull and uh, Point Red, with the exception of the axe here is actually on the long staff, whereas usually the spear is, and the spear is on a short staff where usually the axe is. And uh, if you're wondering, I know I was originally, the axe that is used for here is not a copy of the axe used for Buzz Off. They are totally two separate pieces. One construction note, the manual tells you that when you're assembling the shield, sorry about my big old hands being in the way, but I wanted to show you this. It has this piece here that has a long end on one end, short end on the other. Now, according to the manual, they want you to attach the shield like this, where the long pole is in the hole and the short one is on the hand. This I consider to be really bulky and it makes the shield stick out. I usually do it in reverse, where the short piece is attached to the hole. That makes the shield tight and close to the chest for a soldier to defend, and it doesn't look like it's sticking out like a, like a bad wheel. I have to say the weapons snap on this weapons rack a little bit more tightly and more effectively than on the weapons rack for Castle Grayskull and Point Red. That's just my opinion. Nice little detail to the uh, computer console. There's a targeting screen that shows uh, the Eternia set. I don't know if this thing is supposed to be a scanner to scan surrounding areas, or if this is supposed to be used by the bad guys to target Eternia. And now a quick look at the tower. The tower has three flags on it. The flags not only are printed pieces, but they also have different graphics on each side. So you can display it any way you want. I have this displayed exactly as they're shown in the manual. I'm not sure what the flags signify or what they actually mean. I just followed the instructions as far as that goes. There is a small little handgun attached to one of the uh, windows of the tower. There's also these little side rail pieces. Now, in the original Eternia set, these pieces are supposed to hold the monorail that holds the uh, character up. But there's no monorail that comes with the set, so I don't know why these pieces are included. Maybe, just maybe, Mega Constructs thinks, well, if this is successful, we will make the other two pieces that are supposed to complete Eternia and release those 
at a hundred bucks a piece or whatever, or seventy five like this one was. That would be kind of neat if uh, every six months or so they just come out with another piece and then it's like collect them all. There's a cat head feature that is a build. A lot of little pieces were used to put that together. If you are uh, familiar with putting a gray skull and snake mountain together, then you're familiar with a build like this. All these little pieces come together. Um, I do like how it is a jointed mouth. It actually opens and close. Now, while I was building it, I was missing one piece. I don't know if that piece is just uh, a factory defect or if it's something I lost. All I know is I can't find it. It was a little 2x2 uh, two two flat piece that goes in the mouth here. So I replaced it with a red piece, and by doing that, that gives the effect of a mouth that comes with Eternia. So if you are putting this set together, I will show you uh, which step it is that you could put that in, if I didn't show you already, to uh, make that little red mouth effect. And uh, that kind of uh, contrasts with the fact that this is all one color for the most part. The uh, mouth does move. And it is a locked mouth. It does, doesn't just fall or whatever. Whatever, however big or small you make it, that's the way it's going to stay. It also has a feature where you can uh, put a figure in there and it has a grabbing motion where it grabs the figure either to uh, grab a, a villain or a hero who is trespassing. I'm not sure what Eternia's uh, backstory is, to be honest with you. And it has these little... Uh, Guys, here, I believe these are supposed to be bird-like gargoyles that are in front of Eternia. I'm not 100% sure on that, but that's what they look like to me. Taking a quick look inside the tower itself. Not too much on the ground floor and the third floor and top, but in the middle here, there is a control panel. That, uh, it looks like it's an overall scanner. It also has this, uh, chair apparatus that you can put a figure in there and uh he kind of looks like he's in a little high chair kind of thing and it rotates back and forth to maneuver the figure i think that's kind of neat a little wonky but kind of neat if i do display this piece up against the wall i'll probably remove this piece altogether so that the eternia set is flush against the wall and doesn't stick out or poke out or become uneven And that is a quick look at the tower itself. Okay, so here's a view of the Eternia Battleground standing in between Snake Mountain and Castle Grayskull. As you can see, it's very small when uh, teamed up with its uh, Eternian brothers. I'm not too fond of this idea, but it is what it is, I guess. Well, everyone, I think that's going to conclude my quick look at the Mega Constructs Masters of the Universe Eternia Battleground set. Overall, it's a pretty good set. At the filming of this video, the only way you can get this set is if you go to Mattel Creations. It is an exclusive set. But if you pay $75, that's, with the nor that's normal shipping included. Pay $75, you get some change back. So for that price, uh, I like it. Uh, truth be told, the real reason I bought this set was to get the attack track. That was the the main goal of the set, for me, in my opinion. I would have been content just getting the attack track by itself, to be honest. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. If you're a subscriber already, I appreciate it. Subscribers, I know I've been gone a while, and I apologize for that. I've been trying to do a couple of videos here and there. But I feel that the material was weak, and I just didn't want to expose you guys to it. Again, everyone, thank you so much for watching. And everyone, please, be safe out there.